millions, but we hear it. But now, how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? All these different countries that we come into, that we came from, are we hearing it in our own language? How do these people go up in an upper room, stay 50 days, and learn a foreign language? They didn't even have Rosetta Stone back then. They didn't have computers. They heard them in their own language, didn't they? Again, we hear that. Parthenians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers of, in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Ferga and uh, Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome and Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Where does it say this was an unknown language? Is this the account of the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came and people spake in tongues? The only description we're reading about is that people heard them in their own language. Is that right or wrong? So far, have we studied about an unknown tongue? different. And they were all amazed, verse 12, and they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth this? Others, laughing at the mocking, said, these men are full of new wine. Drunk people can't learn a new language. Drunk people can't even talk in their own language very well. Okay? Now I'm just asking you, look at God's Word. Look at your Bibles. See what it's saying. Okay? There are so many stumbling blocks out here that you hear and you learn, and if you go into other churches, you'll hear about. And I just want you to understand on the day of Pentecost what happened. Okay? I want you to pay more attention to the, God's Word than what you're listening to me. I want you to understand what the Bible's saying. <coughs> Does the Bible lie? Are there any mistakes or errors in this book? Is God, is God being tricky? King James language can confound you sometimes, but we can explain that. We can study past that. Okay. I think it's good that we understand the truth and what's, what the Bible's saying. Okay? They're full of new wine. They were laughing at them. But drunk people can't talk well. Okay? If there's a new language dealing with drunk people... It's unintelligible. <laughs> their tongues get thick. They get tied up in knots. They don't even speak their own language very well. Okay? That's not what was going on. That's not what we uh, are reading about. But Peter, verse 14, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said to them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem. Where's the first two cities Jesus said you're going to be witnesses? Jerusalem and Judea. And here's Peter standing up. All you men of Judea and all you that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day, nine o'clock in the morning. But this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. Joel uh, chapter 12, verse 28. Okay? Uh, who can, who, can you look up Joel? Chapter 12, verse 28. Or chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, verse 28. I'm sorry. Chapter, chapter 2. Verse 6. Verse 28. Verse 28. Okay. 2, 28. Right, it says, It shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, as your old men shall bring dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Go ahead. That, that, that's good. That's good. All right. Now, these people are not drunk like you think or you're laughing at. Verse 15. It's just 9 o'clock in the morning, you said. But this is what was spoken of of the prophet Joel of Scripture. This is what the, the Jews' Bible 
the scriptures, the Old Testament as we know it today. Chapter 2, verse 28, verse 17, it tells us, And it came to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. There's two meanings to the word prophecy or prophesy. There's two, two meanings. When you go back into the Greek and you start studying it, one is to fort, uh, foretell a future event, okay, there, okay? But most of, the, most of the time in the Old Testament when it talks about a prophet, the prophet wasn't always telling you about some future event. A prophet, a prophet would go up, a man of God would go up to a king and sit down you straighten out, and if you don't, this is going to happen. If you do straighten out, this will happen. Okay? Most of those things are messages. Okay? Are messages. And most of the time, a prophecy, it's telling you what God tells you to do, and the results if you do it, and the results if you don't. It's not some fortune-telling thing. Now, can prophets tell the future? Yes, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Uh, they can, all right? But most of prophecy is the Greek word, and I can't, I can't pronounce it for you tonight. Uh, I'll get it for you if you want. But, but uh, it is a message of direction that tells you God wants you to do this, and if you do, this is your benefit, and if you don't, this is your reward, okay? Prophecy. So let's go back and read Read that verse again in verse 18. And on my servants and on my headmaids I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Verse 17, let's go back to that. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. So we have dreams, we have visions, and we have prophecies. And the word prophecy here is talking about giving the direction of God, what the benefit of following God's word, or the or the results of going against God's word. Prophecy. That's what this word is. Okay? It's giving God's direction, the <coughs> results if you follow, the results if you don't. Okay? Giving people a choice. Do you, do, do you see? Do, do, do y'all realize we're, we're probably in the last days today? What kind of messages are out there? Y'all know of any lifestyles that probably need to be given God directions and, be, and, 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 and people in the world being told, if you follow God's word, this is what will happen. If you don't follow good God's word and you continue in the path you're going to do, that you're going on, it, this is going to happen. Do y'all see any instances today that that might be an important message? Yeah, time and time again. Forty years ago, forty years ago, you know, I, I know forty years ago people were talking about Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. But today, I tell you what, that thing of prophecy, the Greek word talking about this is God's word, this is the benefit if you follow it, this is the benefit or the results if you don't, has become more important, I believe, over the last ten years. Okay? So... Verse 19, And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke, and the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord uh, be saved. Okay. Wow, we just finished up the, 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 uh, that, that, that fourth triad, okay, called blood moons the other night. Okay, it's too cloudy around here for you to see the blood moon, the big harvest blood moon, okay, and so forth. But historically, historically, uh, every, every seven years that happens. Historically, every, every 70 years, okay, in Jewish history, according to that, something uh, big dealing with the land of Israel has happened during the blood moons, 
okay, and so forth. And here it is, back in the book of Acts, it talks about the moon turning to blood, okay, turning red color, okay, and so forth. Back in Genesis, and the moon and the stars are there for signs to men, okay? And way up here in the book of Acts, it talks about that these things will be used for signs as well, okay? So, so far what we have gone through is, is the, the, the finalization of the ministry of Christ handing off to the Holy Spirit, right? It, it, it just, it's a handoff, okay, where Jesus Christ was here, but he was sending the Holy Spirit, okay? We've seen what happened on the day of Pentecost with tongues, okay? Uh, and, and, uh, and, and I'll discuss this with anybody and sit down with you and we'll go through it, different versions of the Bible and other studies if you want to, if you have any questions or concerns about what I said tonight. Uh, but I'm going to stand by what God's Word says here, okay? I don't want you to be confused. There's some times, uh, there's some times uh, later on, Paul's going to come in and talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit uh, to the people at Mars Hill, okay? And uh, we'll talk about that. And we'll go into that as well. Uh, through this study, and uh, so forth. So, so we'll, we'll, we'll touch those things, we'll go through those things, but I, I think you need to lock it down uh, and understand this pretty clear. This is what the Bible says. It's real clear. Everybody heard it in their own tongue. It wasn't an unknown tongue. It didn't mention the word unknown. It was a tongue, it was a tongue and a language that the people, that they were from their homeland, they knew, they understood. Okay, now that was a miracle. If I don't know, if I don't know Arabic, Arabic, and all of a sudden I start talking in Arabic, and you understand that, that's a miracle, isn't it? How big a miracle is that? A tremendous miracle. Okay? And to communicate the gospel of Christ would be uh, invaluable. Okay? And, and, and for what the church was fixing to have to be called to do and empowered to do, my goodness, what, what importance. Now, how many times did, did Bartholomew or somebody go out there and speak in another tongue to communicate and use this gift, I, I, I have no idea. There's no record of it. It's just talk, It's not talking about the gift. It's talking about Christ. Okay, uh, but it, but but they were empowered to do these things. Okay, and they were given these gifts. And it wasn't just twelve, but it was at least 120 in that upper room. Okay, and uh, then they were deployed. And just like Peter said, all you people of Judea and all you people that live in Jerusalem, these men aren't drunk as you suppose. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. But this is that that was spoken of the prophet of the prophet Joel, chapter two, verse twenty-eight. Okay, but in the last days I'm going to pour out my spirit, and these things are going to happen. Okay, and he starts talking about some of the things in the last days of the signs in the heavens and so forth. But we're we're, we're sitting there at the early church. Okay, how many times does God change? None. And if the early church was to do this, what's the church of today supposed to do? Something different. There were commands back then and suggestions today. No. So we're going to we're going to take that concept. We're going to read the book of Acts and help us understand what the early church was to do to help us understand what the church today is supposed to do. Okay. We're going to try to do it with clarity. We're going to try to do it uh, in a very simplistic manner. Okay. And we'll discuss it and talk about it. This is a dangerous topic. Book. For a lot of churches, I know that. Okay, but um, you know, and I'm not fighting with anybody. I'm just going to try to teach you what the Book of Acts says, what the Bible tells you. That's what I'm going to try to do. Okay, uh, and I think I think you'll get you'll benefit greatly from just reading God's Word and taking what He says. Okay, All right, uh, things like that. And 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 I think it's beneficial to understand, like prophecy, there's two different meanings: one to foretell the future, and one to give direction. Okay, there. And which one was he being used? The one in the Greek that's being used here in prophecy is the one that says, I'm going to tell you a message, and this is what God says, and if you choose this, this is what's going to happen. If you choose this, this is going to happen. Here, Jesus did that. He said, "He said, I lay before you life and death. Choose life that you might have it abundant. Okay? What happens if you choose death? You're going to go to hell. Okay? And so that was, that was in, this, in, in, this, uh, in this study, we could say that was prophecy. 
Okay? It was, this is God's will. This is what happens if you choose life. This is what happens if you choose death. Okay? And so forth. Many of the kings of Israel <coughs> prophecy just like that. Okay? David was given prophecy like that. Saul was given prophecy. Solomon was given prophecy. The man of God came up and gave him that kind of prophecy too. Okay? And what wasn't foretelling the future was saying this is against God's will. If you don't turn, this is what's going to happen. Okay? And it's prophecy. Uh, so there's two different words for prophecy. Anybody have any questions on tonight? Any comments? Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it.